After the conclusion of Transformers Cybertron in 2006, which brought to a close the Unicron trilogy of series that had been running for the last four years, 2007 saw Hasbro take the Transformers franchise in two bold new directions a blockbuster live-action movie, and a new stylized animated series that marked the return of Transformers animation to North America for the first time since Beast Machines had ended seven years beforehand. This is the story of how that cartoon was created. These are the basics on Transformers Animated. Development on the series that would become Transformers Animated began at Hasbro in late 2004, at which point it was known by the working title of Transformers Hero. In early 2005, Hasbro partnered with Cartoon Network Studios to co-develop the series into a cartoon, creating a story and character designs that the accompanying toy line would then be based upon. Early story ideas conceived by executive producer Sam Register were expounded upon by writer Ford Gilmore to lay down the basic premise of the series. The Autobots were cast as the heroes of a near-future version of Detroit, Michigan, aided by their human friend Sari Sumdak and her robotics magnate father Isaac. In December 2005, writer Marty Eisenberg, well known to Transformers fans for his work on Beast Machines, was brought on board to serve as the story editor for the cartoon. He revised Gilmore's work, keeping the premise but overhauling the characters' personalities. In particular, he reinvented the series' version of Optimus Prime into a youthful underdog, still struggling to prove himself as a leader. Eisenberg also came up with the idea to set the show after the Great Autobot Decepticon War, reimagining the Decepticons as a defeated and exiled army out for revenge, much larger and more powerful than Optimus's inexperienced team of civilian Autobots. The story of Animated was also influenced by the concurrently produced live-action movie, the life-giving Cybertronian relic featured in the film, the Allspark, was incorporated into the show, and Unicron Trilogy characters Hotshot and Red Alert, who were initially intended to be part of the main cast, were replaced with Bumblebee and Ratchet, who were also appearing in the movie. In terms of art style, right from the beginning the emphasis for Animated was on stylization, creating a Transformers series that looked like no other had before it. Early on, as styles were experimented with, it naturally looked very different from what we'd come to recognize as the finished product. But some concepts prototyped in this early phase, including a pair of combining hot and cold themed Autobot Jet Twins, would survive and be adapted into the finished series. The distinctive finalized look of the series was created by Derek J. Wyatt, who was hired on as the show's art director and lead character designer in 2006. Fresh off the hit Cartoon Network show Teen Titans, Wyatt was a lifelong Transformers fan, but chose to design the show's major brand new Autobot character Bulkhead first. As no previous incarnations of Bulkhead existed, Wyatt reasoned that he could push his design choices as far as he wanted, unhindered by nostalgia, and he used Bulkhead to define the style that the rest of the series would follow. With this style in place, animation duties for the series were divided between Japanese studios Mook Animation, The Answer Studio, and Studio 4 Degrees Celsius, under the supervision of producer and director Matt Youngberg. And surprisingly, as with any big departure from the norm, Transformers fans had a vocal and polarizing reaction to the first reveal of the show's art style in summer 2007. But all but the most strident naysayers quickly had their tunes changed when the series' movie-length premiere debuted in December. This three-part adventure told the story of an Autobot space bridge repair crew, made up of loudmouth pipsqueak Bumblebee, gentle giant Bulkhead, cranky old medic Ratchet, Cyber Ninja Prowl, and their captain, disgraced Autobot Academy cadet Optimus Prime, who stumbled upon the long-lost Allspark in the depths of space. Attacked by Decepticon leader Megatron, their ship crashed on Earth, where they lay in stasis on the bottom of Lake Erie for 50 years, until awakening in the 22nd century. They quickly befriended Sari Sumdak, 
who was chosen by the Allspark to wield a powerful key that could channel its energy, which she used to help the Autobots defend Detroit against Starscream. The movie concluded with the revelation that Sari's father had built his robotics company on Cybertronian technology reverse-engineered from the remains of Megatron, a twist that led directly into the first season in January 2008, which saw the Autobots protecting Detroit against threats engineered by the still-living Megatron in his efforts to repair his body, as well as human supervillains and more invading Decepticons. In the season finale, Megatron used Sari's key to complete his restoration, and once more battled Optimus Prime for possession of the Allspark, culminating in the Relic's destruction. This in turn led straight into the second season, which aired right after the first in April 2008, as shards of the destroyed Allspark rained down on Detroit, bringing machines to life as new Transformers. The season also saw Optimus's arrogant rival Sentinel Prime arrive on Earth to become a new thorn in the Autobots' side, while Megatron schemed to build a space bridge with which to invade Cybertron, only to be foiled by the giant Autobot Omega Supreme. The first animated toys arrived on shelves as the second season began. Derek Wyatt had worked closely with Hasbro and Takara designers Eric Siebenhaller and Alex Kubalski to develop the character designs in such a way that their stylized, cartoonish appearances could, against all odds, be faithfully translated into transforming toys. Abandoning the line-wide gimmicks that had defined the last few years of Transformers toy lines, each animated figure came with its own unique action features and weapons. In keeping with the differences between the two factions in the cartoon, the civilian Autobots came mostly with tools and melee weapons, while the Decepticons, built for battle, were heavily armed with guns and blasters. There was no shortage of ancillary media and merchandise either. Animated shorts, story and activity books, a video game for the Nintendo DS, and comic books, including a mini-series from IDW Publishing titled The Arrival, written by Eisenberg and set between episodes of the first season, and a short-lived series released in the United Kingdom by Titan magazines. This all served to tide fans over until the third and final season of the cartoon arrived in March 2009. A little on the darker side to fit in with Cartoon Network's retooled programming lineup, the season centered on Megatron's efforts to seize the power of Omega Supreme and shocked audiences with the bombshell that Sari wasn't human at all, but a techno-organic Cybertronian of mysterious origins. Plans for a fourth season of Animated did exist, further influenced by the success of the live-action film, which would have seen movie characters Ironhide and Jazz replace Bulkhead and Prowl on Optimus' team to help battle the new triple-changing Megatron, who had transported the Decepticon city of Kaon from Cybertron to Earth to harvest new techno-organic Energon that had begun growing on the planet. But ultimately, a combination of factors, not least of all Hasbro's new plans to launch their own TV network in partnership with the Discovery Channel, led to the curtain being drawn on animated after Season 3. The season's conclusion in May 2009 saw Optimus defeating Megatron and being hailed a hero, making it a reasonably fitting end for the series. But it did mean that the mystery of Sari went unsolved, and numerous toys were left unreleased, including some that never made it out of the prototype stage, with several prominent characters never getting any kind of figure at all. The end of Animated came as a blow to many. From that first divisive announcement, its dramatic plots, lovable characters, and the way it mixed original ideas with inspiration drawn from every corner of Transformers history, including the return of classic Transformers actors like Susan Blue, Corey Burton, and John Moshita to the roles they had made famous, had seen it quickly grow into one of the most beloved Transformers series of all time. And that love kept it alive for some time after the cartoon ended. Between 2009 and 2015, the world of the show was expanded upon by IDW series of Allspark Almanac guidebooks. Several of the toys that Hasbro had failed to release would see the light of day in the Japanese market after the series was released there, where it was supplemented by new live-action segments starring the Otoboto family and a manga adaptation titled Transformers Animated The Cool 
And further new stories and toys were also released via the official Transformers convention BotCon, the Transformers Collectors Club, and the Japanese Transformers Legends series. In the years since its conclusion, several of Animated's original characters and concepts have gone on to feature in other Transformers toy lines and series. Perhaps most famously, Bulkhead would appear in the very next Transformers cartoon, Transformers Prime, while bounty hunter Lockdown showed up as the arch-villain of the 2014 live-action movie Age of Extinction. Lockdown currently appears in the Cyberverse cartoon, with new versions of other fan-favorite animated bots, fanatically loyal Decepticon Lugnut and the female Starscream clone Slipstream. Even Animated's decision to recast Ratchet in the role of a grouchy old-timer would prove influential, becoming the standard depiction of the character for several years in both Transformers Prime and the IDW comic More Than Meets the Eye. Sadly, despite frequent calls from fans, there's no sign of an official continuation of the series in any form to wrap up its story. However, in 2019, UK convention TF Nation reunited the original cast to perform a reading of the outline for the proposed fourth season premiere, proving that even 10 years later, love for Transformers animated from not just fans, but from the people who created and worked on it, is still as strong as ever. And those are the basics on Transformers Animated. Share your memories of the show in the comments. Tell me about your favorite characters or your favorite stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more from the world of the Transformers. And if you can, please consider supporting the basics on Patreon.